Welcome to Evening Prayer from the Parish of St Mary Magdalene with St Paul in the Vale and St Michael on the Mount here in Lincoln. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. You lay the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. To dispel the darkness of our night, you send forth your Son, the firstborn of all creation, to be the Christ, the light of the world. Rejoicing in the mystery of the Word made flesh, we acclaim him, Emmanuel, as all creation sings to you. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. This evening's psalms are Psalm 90 and Psalm 148. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth or the earth and the world were formed, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, O children of earth, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday which passes like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid at your wrathful indignation. You have set our misdeeds before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. Our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are three score years and ten, or if our strength endures, even four score. Yet the sum of them is but labour and sorrow, for they soon pass away and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Your indignation like those who fear you? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Turn again, O Lord. How long will you delay? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us with your loving kindness in the morning, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Give us gladness for the days you have afflicted us and for the years in which we have seen adversity. Show your servants your works and let your glory be over their children. May the gracious favour of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper our handiwork, O oh, prosper the work of our hands. Alleluia. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you, his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. 
Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He made them fast for ever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, tempestuous wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and birds on the wing, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and women, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted, his splendour above earth and heaven. He has raised up the horn of his people and praise for all his faithful servants, the children of Israel and people who are near him. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The book of the prophet Jonah, chapters 3 and 4. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock shall taste anything, so they shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may change from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. For this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is not this what I said when I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and it came up and made it came up over Jonah 
to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right to, for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labour and which you did not grow. It came to, into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than a 120,000 people who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals. Here ends the first reading. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. The Father has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. In him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him God was pleased to reconcile all things. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians, chapter 1, reading from verse 24. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil and struggle with all the energy that he powerfully inspires within me. For I want you to know how much I am struggling for you, and for those in Laodicea, and for all who have not seen me face to face. I want their hearts to be encouraged and united in love, so that they may have all the riches of assured understanding and have the knowledge of God's mystery, that is, Christ himself, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I am saying this so that no one may deceive you with plausible arguments. For though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit. And I rejoice to see your morale 
and the firmest of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Here ends the second reading. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. When peaceful silence lay over all, and night was in the midst of her swift course, from your royal throne, O God, down from the heavens, let your almighty word. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. When peaceful silence lay over all, and night was in the midst of her swift course, from your royal throne, O God, down from the heavens, let your almighty word. Let us pray. Just pray for our brothers and sisters in the Diocese of Gazabo in Rwanda, for Bishop Wanispoor, for our brothers and sisters in the Diocese of Giboko in Nigeria, and for their Bishop Emmanuel, for our brothers and sisters in the Diocese of George in Southern Africa, for Bishop Brian, and for our brothers and sisters in the Diocese of Georgia, in the Episcopal Church of the United States, for Bishop Scott. Let us pray also for St. Mary's Link Diocese of Northern Uganda, for Johnson, their bishop, and all our brothers and sisters there, and for our own Diocese of Lincoln, for David, our bishop, for bishops Nicholas and Christopher, and for all the parishes and people of this land, this diocese. As from the Diocese and Prayer Diary today, we continue to pray for the Lincoln School of Theology, praying today for all the lecturers and tutors 
the many people who give their time to the School of Theology to share their academic, theological and spiritual expertise. And so we pray for all who will be lecturing this coming term and are preparing their specific topics. And we pray particularly for all who are having to get to grips with technology in order that they may deliver the training online. From our parish prayer diary on this, the 31st day of the month, we give thanks for the joy of Christian fellowship and the church family of St Mary Magdalene. We pray for God's church worldwide, and especially for those who are persecuted or discriminated against because of their faith. We pray for the work of Christian aid and the many other Christian relief agencies. We pray for all who live or work in our parish and all who visit it. And for everyone on our electoral roll. We pray for the world in which we live. for the leaders of the nations and for all caught up in situations of suffering and danger and difficulty. As the coronavirus pandemic continues to affect all our lives, we give thanks for the work of the National Health Service in this country and we offer the, a prayer for our health service and for all carers. Faithful Lord, you make your home among the vulnerable Hear us as we pray for all in the NHS and in social care who tend to the needs of others. As they continue their works of mercy, may they know your protection and the peace that you give in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we take a time of silence to pray for one another and for individuals or situations that are on our heart this evening. Lord of light and life, as we prepare for a new year, fill our hearts with praise and hope as we, with you and with one another, seek to bring your kingdom to our world. Amen. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image and yet more wonderfully restored us through your Son, Jesus Christ, grant that, as he came to share in our humanity, so we may share the life of his divinity, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May God, who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light, bless us and fill us with peace. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to 